This is part two in a series about converting my Stratocaster to only having one pickup and why I think that that's a good idea. In the last video, I took the pick guard off and created the hole for the single pickup. So if you haven't seen that already, go and check it out and keep watching if you wanna see me finish the guitar and do some testing. So if you wanna do this kind of modification yourself to your own guitar, or if you wanna build a guitar or something like that on the Seymour Duncan website, they have this wiring diagrams page. It's a really great resource. They have everything available for free. So what I do here is I select strats. Then the configuration I have now is three single coils, one volume, two tone, and a five-way blade. That's what I have currently. So you can see there's a fair bit of wiring and stuff inside here. If you count all of these, plus the wire that needs to go from the ground of the pots onto the bridge, which isn't shown in this diagram, it's like 15 individual wires. And you also have a capacitor here. If I go to the configuration, which it will be in after I modify it, one single coil, one volume, you can see it's a much simpler setup. So they've included that ground wire to the bridge in this diagram. So including that, it's only five wires and there's no capacitors. I'm removing 10 wires, removing a capacitor, removing two pots and two pickups. So it's a lot of stuff that will be gone. And you'll see once I open up the guitar, how much wires and mess there is inside here and how much simpler it's gonna be afterwards. So I'm gonna follow this diagram exactly and hopefully it all works. <laughs> uh, I'm no electrical engineer either, so this is a really good resource for me. I'm removing the ground wire from the spring retainer and from the jack so that those wires can be threaded through the holes so that I can remove the pick gut. It's the wires from main pickup. One of them is already attached to the pot. I need to take this one off. I think it makes sense to do that first. I don't need to desolder anything that I don't need. So let's get that one. Gas powered soldering irons are annoying. I'd rather not use one, but that's what I have. And they're annoying because you have hot air that comes out the side of this and burns things. So you always have to make sure that that's not facing anything that could be burned easily. <laughs> Source fan would be great too. I have an open door just here, so I'm getting some airflow. There we go. This is also lead-free solder. So I need that. I need this volume pot. I just don't need that. That's the only wire that I need attached to it, so I might unsolder that blob because there's like a bunch of wires soldered together and I only want one, so yeah, I'll take that blob off. Get off there. Put some extra solder on it. So the pickup is free. Now I need this pot, which already has all the wires I want attached to it, but I need to take this red one off because the yellow one will go there. Where that is, that's the output for the switch. So I might take this off. Yep. So now I can take off the parts that I want. This pickup. I'm gonna put the selector switch back on here just to keep all this stuff together. This is the part that I want. So I can actually just keep all this stuff together in case for some reason I ever want to use it again. I need to keep this so that I can copy this section of aluminium foil tape which is used for shielding against noise. Because I just want to do a direct comparison, I'm going to do the same amount of tape as this. But in the future, I uh, will actually disassemble all of this and I'm going to fill the whole cavity with this tape. I know it's slightly different, but I have this copper foil tape rather than aluminium. Copper is just a better conductor. It's a bit more expensive. It should be better for this but I'll try to match this kind of layout so that our test is accurate. Now this piece of shielding is wider than the tape that I've got, but the cool thing about this tape is that the adhesive that sticks it on is also conductive, so you can overlap it and it continues as like one big conductive sheet. I'm gonna try and make it roughly the same. That's pretty close. Now I just gotta do this part. This one completely covers that hole and half of that hole. I think that looks good. I just used a box cutter to cut away the foil from the holes. So there we go. 
these are all the components I need. I can already see exactly how I need to wire it up. This yellow cable just needs to go onto there and this black cable needs to go into here. And all the other work with grounding wires and stuff has already been done for me. Good thing I didn't desolder anything I didn't need to. I screwed the pickup into the pick guard and later I set it to the exact same height that it was before the conversion and you'll see that in another video that I'm making about the testing process. I just checked my wiring, wiring diagram so it is right. This wire needs to go onto here and this one needs to go onto here and then these go back where they were. I'm going to try and do the signal first. It's in place. I'm going to put a bit more solder on there. You want to avoid the wire moving while it cools so that can give you a dry joint. That's why I did it again. This wire is a little bit damaged so I'm going to put some heat shrink on there. Yeah, I'm just doing a little bit of cable management, taping the two wires from the pickup together, just to make it a bit neater. And now I'm threading the ground wires back through to the spring retainer on the back and to the jack on the front. So I solder the wires back onto the jack so that I can screw that back in. and then solder the ground wire back onto the spring retainer. And with the volume knob attached, the conversion is finished and the guitar is ready to be tested. The new guitar configuration, it looks really cool. It actually feels a little bit lighter, which is something that I wasn't considering, but it's a bonus. So in terms of testing, I found that this configuration is actually a little bit more susceptible to noise. And I think that that's because you have this big open area here where the wires are coming down from the pickup, where the only thing that's protecting them from noise is this plastic. Whereas before you had the two pickups here and they're connected to the ground. So they're in a way shielding the wires underneath it. What I suspect is that if I cover the entire inside of this pick guard with copper foil tape, then we should get less noise than even when we had the previous configuration. So I'll make another video where I test that out and I'll also put the copper foil tape in the timber cavities as well. So more noise in terms of sustain. It seems like on the low end, as in the low E string, seems to maintain a little bit more volume in the first five seconds. And on the high E string, it seems fairly similar to how it was before. So the magnetic resistance of the pickups is not having so much effect on the thinner string. Whereas on the thicker string, it does make a bit more of a difference, which also kind of makes sense. In terms of the way it looks, I think it looks awesome. Uh, I mean, I like the black pickguard, also just having this clean look like this. Now I'm gonna try playing it a bit and see what it sounds like and see what it feels like to not have all this stuff in the way of my strumming hand. happy with how this turned out it feels so much more comfortable playing it like this so i hope you like the video series hit subscribe so you can see the next video where i'll go in depth about the testing before and after yeah give it a like if you enjoyed it and see you next time